Welcome to the workshop. I'm going to show you how to use a circular saw like this to build a DIY table saw like this. At the end of the video, I'll show you how you can make a cut with a table saw, switch to a circular saw, and then back to the table saw in a little over two minutes. I start by measuring the width of the base minus one inch. Don't worry about being exact as this is just a starting point. To see if my idea would work, I screwed two scraps of 3 quarter inch plywood to my workbench with a gap the size I just measured. I moved them closer a couple times until I was happy with the fit. Here I am using a 2 foot by 2 foot 3 quarter inch thick plywood. If you ever cut plywood or other sheet goods, you need a sheet of foam like this. Basically, it's just a big cutting board like you have in the kitchen. Lay your plywood down and adjust your depth to be just a little more than what you are cutting. Here, I'm cutting out a space the size of my saw base, but 3 fourths of an inch longer. You'll see why a little later. The foam grips the wood, so there's no need to clamp. When finished, it stores easily. It can even be stored in pieces if needed. Plunge cuts can be very dangerous when done wrong. A saw blade is just a really sharp, fast wheel that wants to go. To prevent it from going, anchor the front of your saw by firmly pressing down and slowly rocking back. With the board clamped to my workbench, I test the fit. I intentionally made the space small so I could sand it to the perfect fit. It took several tries to get it just right. The scrap from the cutout was cut into two two-inch strips. These were clamped to my new saw top. You can see here that the block will prevent me from getting my full depth, so this center needs removed. If you don't have deep clamps, then a couple of scraps can help you gain a little distance, like this. But know that your clamping force will be reduced. With the center removed, I have now gained 3 fourths of an inch additional cutting depth. You can see how the saw fits, and we'll address the gap between the base and the wood in a minute. We can now glue and screw the blocks in. If you watch carefully while I set this block and clamp it, that it moves around. The reason is that the glue acts as a lubricant, making it difficult to align. The solution is to pre-drill the blocks and install the screws so they slightly protrude, acting like alignment pins. Problem solved. Here you can see how we will resolve this gap. I want this to be adjustable, so we are using T-nuts and bolts. I'm using a quarter by 20 bolt, so that requires a 5 16 hole. A nice trick for working with T-nuts is to use a bolt with a nut as a stop. Now just tap them to mark where the tines hit and pre-drill for the tines. Without pre-drilling, you'll probably bend some tines. Use that same T-nut trick to set the T-nuts in place and add your bolts. Now you can see the purpose of the T-nuts and bolts. They can be used to level and fine-tune the saw base. With the straight edge, check that the saw is flush and adjust accordingly. Now, moving on to the base. I had an 11-inch wide scrap of plywood that worked perfect. For this, pick what height works best for you. In fact, a taller base could make this table saw freestanding. Glue and screw the three sides together. To attach the base and top, you could use pocket holes. I chose to use 2x2 two two cleats for those that do not have a pocket hole jig. A tip is to keep your perpendicular holes close together as they will add strength to each other. I am attaching the cleats to the base with glue and 2 inch coarse thread construction screws. Make sure to always use coarse thread screws when working with plywood and softwoods. You can see on the left side, I have already made a mark parallel to the side. Make sure that the saw will clear the cleats before screwing down the base. When it's aligned, use the same 2 inch construction screws to attach the top and bottom. You can see here with a straight edge that my plywood had a slight warp. I left this in the video to show how to solve the problem if you have the same issue. I installed another piece of plywood in the center using the same cleat method. 
Here you can see how bad the warp was. By clamping the top to my flat workbench, I can use another clamp to pull out the warp before screwing. To correct the back of the table saw, I use a piece of plywood and an angle bracket. This was necessary to keep the back open so the saw could be removed. As I mentioned earlier, we made the cutout for the saw 3 fourths of an inch deeper than the base. This is for a stop block to prevent the saw from sliding back while cutting. I did not glue it in to allow me to modify things if needed. Originally my plan was to depend on the weight of the saw alone to hold it in place. My father-in-law explained the value of some retention. I decided on a Velcro strap that would go through the handle to prevent the circular saw from deciding to take off on its own. A screw and washer connects one side. The other needs to be easily removable, so with some scraps and a nail, I made a quick bracket for the strap to slide through. Screw in place with some wafer head screws to prevent cracking. Add some washers and nuts to the support bolts to prevent them from moving due to vibration. At the bottom of the screen, you will see a piece of plexiglass that was cut with this table saw. This will be my zero clearance insert. I turned down my screws to accommodate the additional thickness. After a couple of adjustments, the plexiglass is attached with some carpet tape. To cut the slot in the plexiglass, I used a clamp since I could not use the Velcro strap while doing this. A quarter inch plywood could also work for this. Just remember to go slow. For a simple switch, I am using a power strip. A photocopy of the back makes aligning the holes easy. Mark the spots, install the screws. I put a screw in the front to prevent it from sliding off. That's it. Keep watching to see an uncut video of me cutting with the table saw, then the circular saw, and back the table saw in a little over two minutes. Please subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. There will soon be some additional short videos of how to make accessories like a rip fence and dust collection. The biggest reason for me making this saw was to use it in future videos, showing that you get great results without expensive tools. Click that notify bell to know when they're up. Since you're still here watching, take a second to scroll down and hit that subscribe button.